Don't go away. Our feature film will begin shortly. Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater. You're out of luck, it's a 1941 mystery comedy. An elevator operator and his janitor sidekick, team up to solve two murders connected to an illegal gambling operation. It stars Frankie Darrow, Kay Sutton and Manton Moreland. What was it like to go to the movies in the 1930s? The experience of going was like an insidious tempting candy we could never get quite enough of. The visit to the dark theater was an escape from the drab realities of the Depression-era living, and we were entranced by the never-ending variety of stories. Even at the Great Depression's lowest point, 60 to 80 million Americans attended the movies each week, and in the face of doubt and despair, movies helped sustain national morale. Although the screwball comedy was the most popular movie genre of the 1930s, the western was the most popular B-movie genre, by far a movie viewer favorite lasting into the 1940s. Murder mystery movies however, were popularized in the early 20th century before film even had sound. Taking inspiration from the 19th century works of Edgar Allan Poe and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and later, Agatha Christie, the popularity of these detective stories lasted well into the 1940s. Hastings Mystery Theater, where time travel is possible, Come with us as we take you back to a simpler time, back through the corridors of mystery, with murder mystery movies from the 1930s and 40s. If you'd like to show your appreciation in a tangible way, then why not partner with us by giving us a one-time small donation? We'd appreciate that, as it will encourage us to keep them coming, bringing these forgotten gems to you on a regular basis. Simply click on the donate link below, in this video's description, and while you're right there you can click on our mystery merch shop as well. Or visit us on Facebook. Or find our free bonus movie link. Thank you so much. And now, here's Randall Schaefer. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us back to 1938 for a Columbia release, Who Killed Gail Preston? A nightclub singer is killed in the middle of her act, and Inspector Kellogg must uncover the killer. Our star is Don Terry. He was born in Massachusetts in 1902. He played football, basketball, and baseball at Harvard. He was a natural athlete. He continued at the pro level after graduation. Don Terry was born with a been there, done that attitude about life. Having his fill of professional sports, he traveled the world working on cargo ships, and eventually he got tired of that, and he settled in Hollywood and tried acting. He was never a great actor, but he was handsome and muscular, and for B-movies, that was enough. He labored in small parts for 10 years, but in 1938, he got his first real lead role in the serial The Secret of Treasure Island. After that, he co-starred in 36 movies in the next five years. World War II interrupted his career. He served as a naval officer in the Pacific and was awarded a Purple Heart. After the war, he no longer had any interest in Hollywood. After all, he had been there and done that. He went into business, got rich, and spent his later years giving away his money. Let's return to 1938 and enjoy Who Killed Gail Preston?
Behave yourself, you're going to get thrown out. <laughs> give you our headline act whether you like it or not. So just keep your seats and listen real hard while Gail Preston sings your song. you know good warbling when you hear it. Well, that's the end of our little show. Yeah. You laugh while we dance? <laughs> now you dance. On your mind. I've told you ten times that I wanted a bigger build-up in my introduction, and I intend to get it. I still happen to be the featured attraction around here. Sure you are. I'm not trying to hurt you out there. As a matter of fact, I'd do anything to help you. You see, I... Cut that out. I didn't come in here to play a love scene with you. All you've got to do is take care of your job, and giving me the proper introduction is part of that job. See that you do it. I'm sure from now on you'll have no complaints. Gail. Do I have to go on playing second fiddle? Second fiddle? You're not even in the orchestra. What are you two doing in here? We came in to settle this thing, Gail. Settle what? Anne and I are going to be married. But you think? You've got to listen to me. You may be my sister, but every chance you've got to try to come between us. A very pretty speech. 
But you wouldn't be so proud if you knew a few intimate details about your charming boyfriend. What do you mean? Do you want to tell a swing or shall I? If you can tell the truth, go ahead. I think you should know that swing falls in and out of love very easily. I don't suppose he told you that he was in love with me. You're wrong, Abby. I never loved you. That hurts your vanity, doesn't it? You find it hard to realize there's somebody you can't dominate. Sure, I was a musician without a dime to my name. With a great Gail Preston. He took a fancy to me. Told me he'd put me on top of the heap. Told me you'd get me an orchestra of my own. You did all those things, Gail. Sure, you gave me a foothold. But I had to do my own climbing. I was grateful to you. Still am. Grateful enough to want to repay you in any way I possibly could. But you had your money on the wrong horse, Gail. I could never fall in love with you. Now you listen to me, Swing. I made you and I can break you just as easily. Beginning tomorrow, there'll be a new orchestra leader in this club. And I'll go out of my way to blackball you in every other spot in town. You won't be able to get a job. I'll see to that personally. And you'll have to starve with him. You had a promising career, Anne. You might have been one of this country's finest music arrangers. But you're spoiling it all by choosing swing. From now on, you can do your own work. Okay. But remember this. If you try to come between Anne and me, it'll be the last thing you ever do. I want you to fire Swing Trainer. What for? Why, he's the most popular leader I've had in the club. Either you fire him tonight or I quit cold. Well, don't forget, Gail, that I still happen to be boss around here. Me? But you'll do as I say. You've got to give me time. I'll get rid of him. Give me a couple of days. Give me time to get a new man. Be reasonable. I'll expect to see a new orchestra leader in here by tomorrow. All right, Gail. Anything you say. Send the swing trainer in right away. Since when do you wait for me in my dressing room? I like it here. What are you going to do about it? I'm getting tired of this. I'm going to... You're going to keep your pretty little mouth shut. Is that what you're going to say? Take it easy, babe. All right, skip it. Go home and put some dinner clothes on and come back here as fast as possible. I want you to sit at a table in the cafe every minute I'm on that floor. What's the idea? I want someone near me who knows how to handle a gun. Okay, Miss Preston, I'll be there. Around sneaking like that. Land sakes, Miss Preston, that sure is a powerful looking piece of artillery. Answer my question. What did you ask? Oh, I, I just wasn't expecting you, that's all. Sure looks like you was expecting somebody. Do you want me to hang these clothes up or do you want to look at them first? No, put them on the chair. I'll look at them later. Now get out and leave me alone. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What's up? Plenty. Gail was just in here yelling her head off. What about? She wants me to fire you. I am. What reason did she give? She's money in the bank for me, Swing. She doesn't have to give reason. Does that mean I'm through? Oh, you'll be able to get another job. Plenty of clubs in town will be glad to have you. If I'm that good, why don't you let Preston go? I can sing, Patsy. I can do any number she can. Why don't you give a guy a break? I'm sorry, Swing. Preston's got the name and you have it. I know. No, there's nothing I can do about it. I'll see that you get a couple of weeks paid. It'll give you time to look around for something else. Okay, thanks. But I'm not through with Preston. One of these days, she's going to get what's coming to her. <laughs> Forget it, kid. You're not the first guy that's been double-crossed for that day. No. But I might be the last. Who is it? Hey. Come in. Gail, if anybody ever tells you you haven't got the best manager in the world, it'll be liable. If I have to admit it myself, I'm tops. I suppose you receive fan mail, too. I've arranged a new contract for you. You stay on here for another 12 weeks. That's fine. But that's not what I wanted to see you about. 
There's a little matter of $60,000 you were supposed to handle for me during the past year. What happened? Nothing happened to her. Why? Where's that accounting I was supposed to get? But that takes time. You can't arrange an accounting at a moment's notice. Maybe. But if I don't get those figures by tomorrow morning, I'm going to the police. Don't be silly, Gail. My dealings with you have always been honest. I don't need a sales talk. Wait here. I still want to talk to you. Hello. Yes. Yes. When did he leave? That's fine. I knew you'd see it my way, Patsy. You're too smart to have me walk out of this place. I'll talk to you later about a new leader. I have a few ideas of my own. Stephen's up. Uh, police headquarters, quickly. Inspector Kellogg, please. This is Inspector Kellogg. Hello, this is Gail Preston, Inspector. I'd like you to come to the Swing Swing Club as soon as possible. Is that an invitation, Miss Preston, or is something really wrong? No, I'd rather not talk about it over the phone. Will you come? I have an appointment that'll keep me for an hour, but I'll be over as soon as I'm finished. There'll be a table reserved for you, Inspector. Goodbye. I'll tell you who it was. Let me find it in a crystal ball. I'll give you three guesses. Well, I'll take them. Gail Preston, singer at the Swing Swing Club. Must be looking for some free publicity. Oh, those dames think we got nothing else to do but jump through hoops when they want us to. We got important work to do. Sure. No, Tom. It's an image. It comes to me in the crystal ball. It's coming closer. I can see his head. It's George Washington, and he wants to say something to me. What do you want to say, George Washington? You sap. It's a two-cent stamp. Well, here we are back again, folks. The first number on our show tonight will be two well-known mugs that were sent up from Chicago for cheating audiences. Whether you like them or not, I give you Lolita and Ardo. my business where I want it. When that dame starts to yell, looks like she runs the business. I've got my reasons for having her around. If she gets too tough to handle, I'll figure out my own way of getting rid of her. Summer, ladies and gentlemen, needs no introduction. You all know Gail Preston. And those of you who haven't heard her sing don't know what you've been missing. I'm just telling you. Any one of you who doesn't applaud for at least 10 minutes when she gets through singing will be given a parole and sent out of here. I'm just warning you, you'll do it or else. Here she comes now, folks. The hottest, sweetest little singer in the world. That human blowtorch. Gail Preston. <laughs> and all 
knows not well All the world is still And I'm alone Living with a heart of stone And praying to the heaven above Use your might that brightens the night And send me my love Love, if you are gone forever I don't want to face the Twelve o'clock and all's not well Living in my lonely shell I know there'll be no hope in store If I knew I had to go through this midnight This midnight once Preston's been shot. Wait a minute. Nobody gets out of here until I say so. Hold on, hold on. Who are you? Inspector Kellogg, headquarters. Have a couple of your men guard the door and don't let anybody in or out. All right, go back and do Come it. On, Come on, Come on, hurry up. Hurry up. by headquarters, send for the coroner, and then take the names and addresses of everybody in here. Oh, that's a pleasure. All right, everybody, get back to your tables. Nobody leaves this club. Who owns this place? I do. Who are you? Inspector Kellogg, headquarters. Inspector Kellogg? Well, what? Miss Preston called me this evening and asked me to come over. You know what she was worried about? I have the slightest idea, Inspector. I was sitting at my table with a couple of friends. Miss Preston was singing. The next thing we knew, she was on the floor, dead. No sign of a shot? No. It was right at the end of her number, and the applause alone was enough to drown out the sound of the shot. <laughs> well, that'll help. Who are you? Waverly, Master of Ceremonies. Where were you when she entered her number? I was sitting over there in the wings, by the band. <laughs> Looks as though anybody might have fired that shot. Sit down and make yourselves comfortable. I have an idea we'll be here for a long time. Guard the exit. Hey, you. Where you going? Go out the front way and head him off in the alley. Right. Get away from that door. Gail Preston, and I'm not sorry, do you hear? I'm not sorry. That guy's crazy. You'll never get me alive. Wait, look out. Who was he? He... What you gonna do with me? 
I don't know nothing. Honest, I don't. Come on, sister, spell it. Who was Owens? I ain't saying nothing. Okay, take it to headquarters. Maybe she'll talk there. I don't know nothing. I, I... Why would Owens want to kill her? I don't know. Come on, sister, we're not playing games. No, I... Well, nothing happened to me? Nothing at all. Tell me all about it. All right, I'll tell it. Mr. Owens was Miss Preston's husband. He couldn't hold a job, and he was drinking all the time, and he kept asking Miss Preston for money, and she supported him for a couple of years. But I guess she got sick and tired of giving him money to buy liquor. And once they had a big argument, and I heard Miss Preston say she wasn't going to give him another cent. Well, thanks. That clears up everything. You can go home now. I'll take care of the reports. I hope so everything comes out all right. Yeah, you and us both. You know, Tom, that's what I call a considerate murder with no fancy trimming. A chase, bang, bang, and it's all over. Boy, we sure cleared that case up in a hurry, didn't we? Hello, Tom. Got a little bad news for you. Bad news? About what? The bullet we took from Gail Preston's body was not fired from Owen's gun. He must have missed her entirely. This is a 32. Preston was killed with a 38. Uh, you can't do that to us. Several bullets were fired from Owen's gun, but this isn't one of them. Someone else murdered Gail Preston. Hello, Standish. Call the license bureau first thing in the morning and have them slap a padlock on the Swing Swing Club. Oh, Tom, does that mean we got to start this investigation all over again? It sure does. We're going over to Gail Preston's apartment for a little look around. Come on. Uh-oh. Come on, Shandu. Anyone else been up to this apartment? I don't know, sir. We just changed shifts. Well, we shifted in a high. We're in a hurry. Looks as if someone beat us to the punch. Yeah, it might. Wonder what anyone would be looking for up here. Huh. That's a sense, Tom. You find a guy that done this, and you got the murder. Well, the plane is not going to be as easy as that. What's that? What's A.P. stand for? First two letters in the alphabet. Huh. Nice going. something? What are you doing here? Everybody asks me questions. But you're going to be different. You're going to tell me what you're doing here. I came to pay off the war debt. Listen, Fallon, your wife's cracking yourself right into a spot. Now, wait a minute, Inspector. I'm not involved in this murder, and what's more, I don't intend to be. Wait a minute. Sit down. The minute that murder occurred in your nightclub, you were involved. And you're still under suspicion. I thought the case was solved. I changed my mind. I didn't like the murder we caught, so I'm looking for a new one. Now, what are you doing here? Uh, Gail borrowed a valuable first edition from me and never returned it. And I came here to get it. So 
you're looking for a book in this apartment at four in the morning. Why don't you save those for your after-dinner speeches? You can't pin this on me. I have nothing to do with the murder. That's what you have to prove, and you better talk fast. I've got nothing to say. Listen, pal, I'm giving you a break. Talk! I met Gail Preston several years ago in London. I wanted to come to New York, and she helped me get a job. They let me in on a six-month passport. And you overstayed your leave? The immigration officers were after me, and so I changed my name. Gail was the only one who knew it. What did you expect to find here? She kept a diary and my stories in it. Okay, Fallon, I'll believe you for the time being. But tomorrow morning, you better see the Immigration Bureau. They may have something to say about your case. I don't want to go back. Maybe you won't have to. You have a good chance of landing in a real jail. All right, Cliff, bring her in. Now, I suppose you collect first editions, too. Practically. I was looking for that diary myself. Hey, that diary's beginning to look like the book of the month. It must be loaded with dynamite. What are you afraid of in that diary? Well, it had nothing to do with what happened tonight. There are a lot of us who have personal affairs that are innocent enough, and we want them to remain personal. Maybe so, but housebreaking is still a prison offense. I have every right to be here. You and how many others? Fallon had a key. Well, I don't know anything about Mr. Fallon, but Gail Preston was my sister. Your sister? Well, that's a new angle. That diary doesn't have to be made public, does it? Maybe and maybe not. In any case, you hang around and get you if I want you. Someone has to do plenty of talking before this case is closed. Here it is. What are you doing with Miss Preston's things? Miss Ann left word they should be sent over to Miss Preston's place. She wants to look through them. Would you know if something was missing? Yes, sir. Did you have anything of the diary? Miss Preston never kept nothing here but her clothes. Is everything accounted for? No, sir. There is something missing. Her gun. Used to keep it in that drawer, but it's gone now. When did you miss that? A little while ago when I come here to pack. What caliber was it? I don't know, sir, but it sure looked wicked. I can answer that. It was a 38. When was the last time you saw it? Last night. Did Miss Preston have any visitors just before she was killed? Mr. Stevens, her manager, was here. Where does he live? I don't know, sir. He keeps his car in the same garage as Miss Preston. Say, I saw him there this morning. He told the attendant he was going to Canada on business and said he was leaving this afternoon. Is there a phone here? Yes, in that other room. Cliff, get me headquarters. Uh, what's the number? Spring 731. Get out of here, Lug. What's Stevens' full name? Jules Stevens. Age? About 40, I think. That's right. He weighs about uh, 180 pounds. Down the phone now, Tom. Okay, find out where Stevens' office is, pick up a couple of men and look over his books. Right. Call Mrs. Kellogg. Pick up Jules Stevens, age 40, weighed 180 pounds. Driving a yellow roadster, believe it's headed for Canada. Yeah. Put it on the teletype and radio. Okay. Calling all cars. Watch for new yellow roadster. New York license. Three, four, dash, five, two, eight. Believed headed for Canada. Arrest driver, Jules Stevens. Hey, that looks like that Stevens car they want in New York. Let's go. Okay, turn around. You're going back to town. What does this mean? I don't know, buddy. I'm just working here. Get going. I won't stand for this. I have business in Canada, and you've no reason for dragging me back here like a criminal. Come on, Stephen. Let your hair down. What were you doing with Gail Preston's gun? Well, the gun was too big for her, and she asked me to change it for a smaller one. I understand you had an argument with her last night. So what? It was just a business disagreement. What was it about? Preston gets a sudden idea that she wants to go to Europe and asks me for an immediate accounting of her funds. Well, why the argument? Well, you can't toss off an accounting at a moment's notice. I told her she'd have to wait. For a man who claims innocence, Stevens, you're doing a lot of lying. 
Preston had no intention of going to Europe. Because she just signed a new contract with Fallon. Well, uh, she signed the contract after she made up her mind to go to Europe. Sure. What'd you find? That thing hasn't been fired since the day it was bought. I told you that. Why don't you guys pick on the right man? We sometimes do. Stevens, there are still a few things I'd like to ask you. What, for instance? We've just gone over your books and there's a small matter of 60,000 that's bothering us. 60,000 that belong to Gail Preston. And you'll have to account for every penny of it before we're through with you. What do you want here? You guys have got me in a spot. They won't take me out of the country because of the murder, and I can't even open my club because you've got it padlocked. You've got me going and coming. Reopening your club is the least of my words. Even with the club closed, I'm losing my shirt. Listen, Fallon, you squawk too much. When Preston's murder is solved, you can reopen the Swing Swing Club. But not before. Yeah, but I... Wait a minute. Do you have many reserve tables at your place? Well, of course, most of them are. Why? Then you have a chart for your table layout, haven't you? Well, sure, that's how we make our reservations. Just mark the name of the customer down on the chart. Right, Preston was killed? Yeah, probably. Good. We're going to your place to have a look at that chart. Come on. I want to find out who was sitting at the tables toward the rear of the cafe. The shot that killed Preston hit her about here at a slight downward angle. May have been caused by the way she was bowing. Wait a minute, I'll switch on the light. Fine. Nothing happened. Well, something's wrong. Did you have the current turned off when you closed the club? Oh, no, I didn't expect it to be closed this long. You better call the electrician and have him fix it. I'll wait out in the cafe. I'll be right back. Oh, Mr. Fallon, is something wrong? Yes, there may be. You better get up there and take a look around. Okay, as soon as I put on these lights. Well, they won't work. You better fix them. Huh. The fuse is blown, sure. I can fix that in a minute. Yeah. That'll take care of it. Hey, what's this? Where'd you come from? I come back to get me tools on the electrician here. Help me down below, will you? Sure. That ladder looks like a picket fence. What happened to you? <laughs> I don't know. We got company. Yeah, something's wrong. Come on. Well, this looks like old home week. Where did you men come from? I came back to pick up Miss Preston's bags. I was picking up some of my own stuff. What seems to be the trouble? You may know as much as I do about it. When did you get here? About half an hour ago. I got here a couple of minutes ago. Say, where's that toolbox you were supposed to be looking for? I keep it in the hat check booth. You keep a monkey wrench in it? Sure, why? We'd better take a look at that kit. Well, there ain't nothing in it for tools. 
I agree with your pal, but there's nothing I want to see more than a lot of tools. Okay. Now, this must have dropped out of the electrician's box. I didn't want to say anything while Mike was here. Thanks. This may be the ten-ton truck I was talking about. Well, there it is. What now? You got a permit to carry this? Sure I have. When you work at these cafes, you don't get home late at night, and they always like to have a gun on you. Where's the wrench you said was in this box? Wrench it ought to be in here. Well, who'd want to be stealing a monkey wrench? Maybe it wasn't stolen. Is this it? Sure, that's mine. Where'd it come from? That's what I want to know. Say, what are you driving at? Ask me questions. How long have you been working here? Oh, since the club opened, about three months. Where did you work before that? I was head electrician at the palace. Why? How long did you work there? Twelve years. I'd still be there only a... Only what? Say, what are you asking me all these questions for? Because I'm a crazy cop, that's why. Let's have it. Well, I was at the palace when Gail Preston was doing her headline act there. And one night the mic went dead and it spoiled her act. So she went to the manager and had me fired. So you had good reason to hate her, huh? Oh, well, can you blame me after being at one place for 12 years? It wouldn't be enough reason to kill her, would it? No, it wouldn't. Do any of the other fellows know where you keep this box? Well, they all know it would... Say, I never kept that thing a secret. Okay. It's a lucky thing for you, this is a 32. Preston was killed with a 38. Now beat it. I won't need you any more this afternoon. Say, Daniels, how did you happen to get a job with Miss Preston? Well, I blew in the town where a lot of big Broadway stars were being spotted for holdups. An agency put me in touch with her, and she hired me for a chauffeur and bodyguard. Why did she need a bodyguard? She went out a lot. It was a different party every night. She never wanted to sleep. What was the matter? Well, if you ask me, she had something on her mind. She'd get so low you couldn't talk to her. Then she'd sit down and write a lot of junk in that diary of hers. What does that diary look like? Oh, nothing much. I only saw the outside of it. It was black leather. Okay. Where can I reach you if I want you? Well, I'll be on around a bit. Mr. Fallon said he'd try to get me a job. All right. Say, did either of you men know that Gail Preston had a sister? Everybody knew that. What's her name? Ann Bishop. What's the tie-up between Swing Trainer and Ann Bishop? I don't know. Oh, I can answer that. He used to take her out pretty regularly. Maybe they were going to be married. I don't know. By the way, I've got to tell you. Gail came to me the night she was murdered and told me I had to fire a Swing Trainer or she'd quit me cold. What reason did she give? She didn't. Just said do it or else. Maybe I'd better have a nice long talk with Mr. Swing Trainer. Police headquarters. Uh, give me Cliff Connolly. Hello, Cliff. This is Tom. Pick up swing trainer immediately and hold up a questioning. Yeah, right away. Just how long are you guys going to keep me here? Shh. What's the idea of dragging me down here? Where'd you find it? Up at his apartment? Hmm, right around the corner from the club, isn't it? Sure. Very interesting. All right, boys, you can go now. Sit down, trainer. You didn't get along very well with Preston, did you? What gives you that idea? Quit stalling, trainer. Why'd she want you fired? Apparently, she wasn't satisfied with my work. Did she ever complain to you about anything? Sure. But did you ever know a star that blamed herself when something went wrong? Are you asking me or telling me? Listen, trainer, we'll get along a lot better if we both come right to the point. Where does Ann Bishop fit in things? How did her name get mixed up in this? Miss Bishop's a nice girl. I'd protect her too if I were in your boots. I'm not trying to shield anybody. No? Ever see this before? Sure, I wrote it. So what? I just found it in her pocketbook when I searched it. You've got a lot of nerve. Just a minute. She's as much under suspicion as anyone else. If you don't tell me the truth about this, I'll have to get it from her. You can leave Ann's name out of this. I sent her that note because she and I were... Well, you were going to be married. Well... Did she know you didn't get along well with Preston? Yes. You're under arrest, trainer. What for? You have no evidence. What do you mean, no evidence? You and Ann fall in love. You meet opposition, Preston. She's going to have you fired. It'll give you a black eye on the profession. I tell you, I didn't do it. I think you did. If I'm wrong, you'll beat the rap.
guess who's out there waiting to see you? Oh. Ann Bishop! Well, my friend, it looks like our plan is beginning to work. Now, if we can get her to talk, we'll have her right where we want her. Where's that? You ought to know. Look on the crystal ball. Come on, bring her in. This way, please. Hello, Miss Bishop. Why did you arrest Swing? He didn't kill Gail. Well, you seem quite certain. I am. I know Swing Trainer. But what makes you so positive? Because I know more about this than you do. Everybody knows more than we do. Uh, Miss Bishop, if you sit down and tell me about it, I might be able to help you. Well, Gail was infatuated with him. But Swing and I fell in love and we made no bones about it. And when we told Gail that we intended to get married, she threatened to drive Swing out of the business. Well, seems that you're giving me a very good reason why Swing Trainer should have killed Gail Preston. That's not so. Swing and I were married the very day she was killed. Very interesting, but proves nothing. Why, don't you see? It's impossible to believe that he'd marry me knowing he was going to kill my sister the same day. Perhaps, but all crimes aren't premeditated. This one was. It was so well planned you haven't even found the murder weapon yet. Right again. But until that diary is found, Swing Trainer is guilty. Well, I'll go right over to the apartment now and look for it. Will you meet me there? I'll be there in half an hour. You know, I think the dame is right. Swing wouldn't knock over Preston on the same day he was going to marry Ann. It wouldn't be, uh, ethical. I'm inclined to agree with you. But in the meantime, keeping him in jail may do a lot of good. It might bring the real murderer out in the open. Oh, I sure do wish I could get my hands on that diary. You and five or six others. Hey, maybe we should start a club, huh? Thought that dame said she'd be waiting for you. Best clerk said she came up 20 minutes ago. There must be something wrong. Come on. Get up. Give me a hand. Take it easy, kid. What happened? Well, I, I was at the safe and I'd just taken the diary out. But somebody must have seen me. The only thing I remember is something hitting me. Let's take a look at this place. You go in the bedroom, I'll look this room over. Water, quick. Water. Hurry up, you lug. Well, what could have happened? Looks like Daniels wants to join Cliff's club. Hey, what's, what's going on? Did you see anything in that diary before it was taken? Why, yes. Uh, seems to me I remember. Why, about Daniels? About his being connected with some robbery? I don't know what she's talking about. What were you doing here? I met her outside. She said she was going to send me my back pay, and I remembered I hadn't given her any folding dress, so I came back. I can think of a better alibi than that, Daniels. You came up here to swipe that diary. I'm telling you the truth. I came in just as she was opening the safe, then I was smacked on the head. That's, that's all I remember until you take me out of the closet and take these things off me. There's only one thing wrong with that story. It's a lie. You heard us coming and went into that closet. You tied yourself up and did a good job on everything but your hands. That's pretty tough. Now quit stalling. Where's that diary? I don't know. Okay, pal. I'll let you have a little talk with a couple of the boys down at headquarters. Clip! He doesn't want any water now. 
Can I just spill a little on him? Take him away. Oh, so you're going to join my club, eh, Palsy? Come on, let's get going. Come on, Daniel, stop talking. I told you all I know about it. I wanted to sell a diary to the newspapers. I needed the money. I didn't kill Preston. You guys can't pin the rap on me. How long were you working for? About three months. How much did you pay you? Forty a week. Three months at forty weeks, about five hundred dollars. How do you count for the twenty thousand you have in the bank? Every nickel of it deposited while you were working for Preston. Where'd you get it? I don't have to count for the money I make. There are not many ways you can make that much in three months, Daniels. How'd you get it? Gambling. Where? Saratoga. When were you there? About two weeks ago over the weekend. That's a lot of money for a chauffeur to win at the races. I can think of other ways you can make that money. Maybe you stole something, some jewelry. That's a lie. I had nothing to do with it. He's not kidding. The weekend you said you were at Saratoga, you were actually driving Miss Preston to a party at Connecticut Beach. You came back for 7.30. During that afternoon, some holdup man knocked over the beach party and got away with $10,000 worth of jewelry. What's that got to do with me? She went to a lot of parties, and there were always some crooks around to pull a job. You tipped them off and gave them the layout of the place they were to knock over. Preston got suspicious. She kept tabs on you. And when she learned the truth, she threatened to turn you over to the police if you didn't return all the stolen stuff. You had to get that diary, Daniels, because you knew those facts were in it. All right, I was in on the robberies, but I didn't kill Preston. I didn't say you did. Did any of those other crooks know that she was wise to their racket? No, I didn't tell them a thing about it. Okay, Cliff, take them away. What are you going to do with me? What do you think? Look you for robbery and suspicion of murder. And if you want to make it easier on yourself, you better disclose the names of those guys you worked with. But I didn't kill Preston, I tell you. Hold me on the robbery charges, okay. But you're not going to keep me here for killing Preston. No, we're only going to keep you here because you smell so nice. Come on, get going. Hello, Bill. Hiya, Mike. What are you doing here? Well, I come over to get me overalls and clean up the joint. I'm going back to the palace. That's swell. You know, I'd be glad to get out of this place. It gives me the willies. I'll be in Mr. Fallon's office. All right. Well, I'll be seeing you in a minute, though. Okay. Hello, give me police headquarters, quick. I want to talk to Inspector Kellogg. Hello? Inspector, this is Mike, the electrician over the Swing Swing Club. Yes, I just found out how Miss Preston was killed. Well, I was checking over the equipment when I noticed one of the spotlights was damaged. I started to fix it when... Hello. Hello, Mike. Mike, get my car ready and have Cliff and Arnold meet me downstairs. Swing, swing club, as fast as you can make it. Right. Where are your phones? The booth, right over there. Come on. But listen. Shot in the back of the head when he was trying to call me. Get the car now. Come in here, I want to talk to you. Has anyone else been here within the last hour? No, sir. No one's been here all day. You and I are going up and take a look at that spotlight box. That was the one thing that Mike mentioned over the phone. You stay here and keep your eye on this guy. Okay, Inspector. Operate the lights. I wonder where they lead to. Probably up on the roof. Let's take a look. We'll examine these thoroughly. You look at that one. wheel acts as a motor. As it spins around, it tightens up this wire until it pulls the trigger on the gun. Whoever is standing in the spot gets the bullet. Sure, it must have taken some guy a long time to figure that out. This is the gun that killed Miss Preston. Remember, she got shot at the end of her number, when the band was playing the loudest and when everyone was applauding. 
That's why the gun wasn't hurt. Well, if that's the gun that shot Preston, uh, the wire should be tight, shouldn't it? No. This wheel works on a spring. It turns around so many times one way, then the spring releases it, and it operates in the other direction. Get the fingerprint man and have him go over this gun thoroughly. Then get the ballistics man and have him check the barrel of this gun against the markings on the bullet that killed Preston. Tell the officer on duty not to let anybody in here. Meet me at headquarters when you get through. Right. You got the right gun this time, all right. It checks perfectly with the murder bullet. Yeah, when you find out whose fingerprints is on that gun, you got the guy. Because the crystal ball <laughs> says, what'd you find out? Sorry, inspect another fingerprint on that gun. Well, that's fine. Well, boys, we can start all over again. Hey, wait a minute, Tom. That guy's been trying to get the gun ever since he put it up there. And if he comes back again, we'll nab him. He might come back and he might not, but I'm not going to sit around and wait for him. We'll have to make that murder or return to the scene of the crime. Make him? How do you expect to do that? Cliff, for the benefit of the murderer, we'll reenact that crime. What for? We're going to catch the murderer with his own contraption, the spotlight. Only one person knows there's a gun in that color wheel spotlight. Instead of playing it on the singer, we'll play it on every suspect in the audience. And when it hits the murderer, he's going to break. Because he knows that gun can go off again. Now listen, Cliff. Get hold of Patsy Fallon and tell him I want that club open again tomorrow night. And I want everything just as it was the night Gail Preston was murdered. And I want Swing Train released immediately. Get the tuxedo press, my friend. We're gonna catch a murderer in style. Uh, table five. Why were we brought here? We had nothing to do with your silly old murder. We were going to the opera. Hey, listen, lady, you get all the uproar you want right here. I'll get in there, but I don't want to hear a peep out of you. Cell three. Everybody hear you? Yeah, I just checked off the last one. Fine. Well, I guess everything's all set. Close the doors. Uh, wait a minute. I wish I knew what was going on. So does everybody else. Kellogg certainly has something up his sleeve. I'm going to need your help tonight, Waverly. Do you know the routine of everything that took place the night Gail Preston was murdered? That's right. I'd like to have you announce this show in exactly that order. I'd be glad to help you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, you are gathered here for one purpose tonight. As you have been notified, we are reenacting the scene exactly as it took place the night Gail Preston was murdered. One of you here is the murderer. That we are sure of. Before this night is over, we hope to arrest that person. And every other man and woman in the house will be instrumental in catching the guilty one. Start the show now, Waverly. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, our first number will be a specialty dance by Lolita and Ardo. where Gail Preston's supposed to sing. Well, someone will have to take a place. Will you do it, Miss Bishop? Well, yes, I'll be glad to. Why should she take that chance? What chance? It's all right, Swing. I'm not afraid. If you don't mind, Inspector, I'll do the singing. That's okay with me. And not Swing Trainer. Right. Our next number will be a song by our orchestra leader, Swing Trainer. You got everything straight? Right. The white light on the singer and the colored light around the audience. Okay.
everyone in a different way. Take Waverly, it turned him into a cold-blooded killer. Oh, love, what a beautiful thought. I wonder what it'll do to me, Tom. Specter, you'll never know how grateful we are. A few days ago, we were really in trouble. Now, thanks to you, our future looks swell. That's it, the future. Let me try the crystal ball once more. Oh, crystal ball, don't fail me now. I knew it wouldn't fail me. I see one. I see two. I see three. It's triplet. Triplet? Nice going, Shandu. heavyweight champion of the Pacific Tuna Fleet, and he can't do it himself. What's the Pacific Tuna Fleet coming to? Oh. So you want personal attention, eh? S.S. <sighs> Arcus calling. S.S. Arcus calling. The Morris line lost another ship, the Matlock. What happened? The Raider get her? It's what they say. You and your little playmate have a smooth routine. Well, Al, with a, an old smoothie like you, we've got to have one. And now, muscle-bound, I've got a little present for you. <laughs> I have a line on Mr. Carter. I happen to know where he planted those bombs. There's one in that radio, and one in the radio in the engine room. And they're to explode at midnight in two minutes from now. Subscribe, share, and most of all, stay positive. Hi there, I'm Randall Schaefer. You see me, most of you see me, on YouTube, hosting Hastings Mystery Theater. And this shirt honors Hastings Mystery Theater. If you would like a souvenir of this shirt or other similar products, 
take a look at the description down below. You can get yourself a souvenir. Thank you to all the YouTube people who watch us. We appreciate it. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again. For your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies.